Okay, so we are back at the finish line with our Pan de España cake. If you've been following along, go ahead and comment down below. Let me know how your cake has turned out. But we are at a full 30 minutes of cook time. We checked it at 20 minutes to see what was going on. And I also remember I also added a cookie sheet underneath it as I, as I baked it. Just to make sure to catch some spillage. But there we go. <laughs> this looks like perfection to me. Let me go ahead and shut off the oven. So I'll get that off. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna grab some mittens and grab this with two hands. So hang tight for a sec, here we go. Do, 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 do. Let's do one of these. Okay, so important thing here is just watch yourself, but that's the color that you're looking at. You're looking for a nice golden fluffy kind of a brown. The lighter it is, the more uh, moist the cake is going to be. You don't want to you don't want to overcook this, and it will darken too as well after you take it out. So what I want to do is I want to go straight from this cookie sheet. Uh, this is a Volrath, by the way, industry standard. I'm going to go straight to a cooling rack. I just basically do one of these, and then now I just want to set it and forget it. Just leave it alone. Let me close the oven. Getting blasted by 250 degrees of heat. Okay, so let's talk about this real quick. So this is what your pan de España should look like when it comes out of the oven. It should be it should be nice and golden, very airy, very fluffy, right? See all that beautifulness. And uh, something I didn't put in the what was it video number five? I forgot I forgot to do. I had to take it out and basically redo it all over again. Was uh, I forgot to put a, I forgot to put a, a half tray or a cookie sheet or just some kind of rack underneath it for this such occasion so that if you do get some overflow and some spillage, at least you know that it's not going to go down into your oven and then ruin uh, the bottom of your oven. But let's compare. Let's compare. So this is this is the version that my buddy Butcher wrote <laughs> the recipe. They left some stuff out, they added some stuff in. I don't know what they were trying to do and it just came out too dense. What happened was the structure broke and then that green part there, I think that's the egg that had just settled to the bottom after the structure broke. What's going on now and the reason why I don't wanna to touch this is all of those gases that are in there that filled out the structure, right? The structure was the cornstarch and the flour all those gases in there are now cooling back down and this this wants to collapse. The whole thing wants to collapse. So through natural cooling, like do not put a fan on this. Don't wave at it. Don't try to speed up the process. It's going to be what it's going to be. So just let it do its thing. But what's going on now is, is as it cools, it's going to harden. It's kind of like, you know, first there was a big bang and then there was... Uh, you know, the lot, the earth formed and then the lava came, you know, kind of thing. It's kind of like lava. It's molten right now in there. It's similar to molten lava. So it's important to just let this cool naturally. And I can already tell just by eye, I can already tell that the outside is coming a little darker too. the, sh the shading and the coloring. It's getting darker. I'm not sure exactly of that scientific process, but I can tell it's like chocolate chip cookies. Like whenever I make chocolate chip cookies, I take them out like when they're golden and then they end up getting darker as they cool. So if you know what that process is, comment in the comment section down there below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, but anyways, once again, just for comparison's sake, this was the version that my buddy Butcher <laughs> basically, and it was too dense and it came out basically with the structure broken, all the, all the liquid settled to the bottom and that's how you got now look at the version that I made. This is following the true recipe, right? Just to quickly recap, go back in the video playlist. Go back to the videos prior to this one. You'll see how we got to this point. But to quickly recap, the recipe is basically eight eggs, 250 grams of sugar, one teaspoon of lemon juice. You mix that in a mixer. Whether you use a stand mixer or handheld, it's up to you. Give or take, you want it to form medium peaks. So not stiff, not soft, but somewhere in the middle, like medium peaks. Then what you do is you add your vanilla and you add your salt, right? It's one teaspoon of vanilla, quarter teaspoon of salt. The vanilla kind of gives it that nice little flavor. The salt kind of acts as a transportation device to deliver those flavors to your taste buds. Mix that for a little bit. And then basically what you do is then you add in your dry ingredients, which is 200 grams of cornstarch, 50 grams of flour, and one teaspoon of baking soda. 
what happens is, is when you add that, you add it in like two batches is what we did in this video series. When you add that, the baking soda will have a chemical reaction with the lemon juice. And that's what helps give you that lift, that airiness. So if you've ever made pan de España in the past, see, I can see the sinking too. See how it's starting to sink? It's starting to sink a little bit too. It's funny. It's this is all happening in real time. What happens is, is if you've ever made pan de España or angel food cake or sponge cake in the past and your cake has come out like this, right? Being a big, dense mess, you are probably doing a couple of things incorrectly. There's not enough maybe aeration with the mixer, right? You need to make sure that you that you get enough air incorporated into the eggs and make sure you get those medium peaks, if not stiff peaks, right? Or it could be that you have too much liquid or the sugar's off. That's why it's very important to have the right tools. A good, a good digital food scale, a good you know set of utensils, like good measuring spoons, all that kind of stuff. But, but try to experiment on your own with different recipes. See what you come up with on your own to kind of find what works for you. Every oven is different. Every you know a bunt cake is different. Like if you don't want to use the bunt pan, use the regular pans. You know, you could have split this up into two different pans and basically made like a two layered cake when it's all said and done. You know, if you want to put some icing in the middle or frosting, you really don't need to. The traditional recipe is just as it is. It's very delicious. The cornstarch adds the lift. It's what gives it the light airiness. The flour is what gives it the structure. So that's basically it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this cool completely, which usually takes around 10 minutes or so. When it reaches room temperature, like I want to make sure this is somewhere between give or take around 68 to 75 degrees, 72 degrees or so. Then what I'll do is I'll remove it off the tray. I'll go ahead and flip it onto the Volrath cooling rack that I have down there. I did put some more budget type racks down there below in the description, so be sure to check that out. Everything I'm using in terms of cooking utensils, appliances, all that stuff will be down in the description section, so make sure to check that out. If you do like what you're seeing, hit that thumbs up, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will catch you all on the next exciting video. And if you have any comments, if you if you want to go ahead and comment away, let me know if you're at this point uh, in the cake as well, if you've reached if you've reached success, much in the same way that this uh, cake has turned out. This is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. If you reach that success, make sure to comment in the comment section down there below. Or if you have any questions like, hey, can I do this? Can I do that? I try not to veer too much from the recipe. Uh, instead, of, I did make a note, I believe it was in the first or the second video, where if you're not going to use baking soda, like if you don't want that baking soda, lemon juice, chemical reaction to give more gases in here, you do need something like, what is it, a cream of tartar, or you need something like potato starch, like in Italian, it's called fragola, I believe, or, or something like that. Uh, but you do need something to give it additional structure besides just the flour and the cornstarch. So anyways, if you do like what you're seeing, like button, subscribe button, check out the description section for some pretty cool products, and I will catch you all one more time, one last video to show you how this is all going to come together after I slice into it and take a massively huge bite out of it. It's looking and smelling delicious.